in, faith kids. How are you doing today? I'm so glad that you're tuning in and that you're watching. Remember, comment in those sections. Let me know that you are watching. And I saw that uh, Ariana and jo Jasmine are watching and Cadence is watching. Thank you for commenting in those sections. And I thank all of the youth ministry workers also tuning in sister trevina sister dolores thank you guys for tuning in and watching so fake kids you were ready let's get your bibles get your phones get your tablets whatever you have that bible on so that we can get ready to get into the word of god for today i'm so excited on what we're going to talk about on today so let's pray and get into his word father we come just to thank you for this day we glorify you and we praise you for this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it father we pray as we study and meditate upon your word god we pray that your holy spirit will give us revelation revelational truth god that we would know you more better lord god in your son Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, faith kids, let's get ready. Today, we're going to just talk about who God is. And we're going to talk about the names of God and who he is and explain that his name is who he is to us. So let's get started. Let's turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 8. And we're going to go through a lot of scripture because we're doing his names. And so it's okay if you get there or you can tune in, get turned, look at the scriptures later on, read it on the screen. So Romans chapter eight, and we're going to talk about the first name of God, which is, say it with me, Abba. That is his name, his name Abba. And it means daddy or father. I like to say daddy because that tells you that is a close relationship that we have with God. Just like, you know, when something is going wrong and you want daddy to, to come, you don't say, you know, by his real name, you don't say, oh, John, I need you, or Kevin, or Stanley. No, you say daddy, and he comes and comes to you. And that's just like our God. He is daddy. He is Abba. So in Romans chapter 8 and verse 15, it reads, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. So that is one of the names of God is Abba Father. And as we're studying these names, I know you may have heard your parents seeing them when they're praying or uh, Pastor Stan or some anyone who's been saying these, you hear these and I know you need a better understanding because we want to get an understanding in everything we do. So just to know that when we're talking to God and we're praising God and we're thanking him, we use his names because that's who he is. We thank him for who he is in our lives. He is Abba, our daddy. So let's go to another name that he has. He has the name Yahweh or Jehovah. Mostly we say Jehovah. We don't say Yahweh as much, but they're interchangeable. Yahweh or Jehovah. But it means Lord. It means God is Lord. And if you would turn in the scriptures to Deuteronomy chapter six, again, if you don't get there, that's fine. Deuteronomy in the Old Testament. We know that because we know those books of the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter six, and we're going to read verse number four. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. So Jehovah or Yahweh means Lord. That is one of his names that he is Lord. So when we're praising, we say Lord. All right, let's go to another name, faith kids, that we can say. God is Elohim. Again, Elohim. God is Elohim. He is the one true only God. He is God. So Elohim says that you are God, that he is God. So we're thanking him and we're praising him because he is God to us. In the scriptures, Genesis, the first book of the Bible, I know you can go there quickly. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 17. And verse number seven, it reads, I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation 
This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. So God would always be our God. He is Elohim in our lives. Again, the next one, he, God is El Shaddai. Again, El Shaddai. God is El Shaddai. He is the Lord God Almighty. So I know you hear that all the time, that God is the Lord God Almighty. And in Psalms chapter 91, you can go there quickly. Psalms 91, and we're going to read stanza one. Those who live in the shelter of the most high God will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. So here it just talks about when David was recognizing that God is the God, the almighty God. He is El Shaddai. Another word we're going to learn about God on today, faith kids, is that God is El El Young. Again, let's say that. El El Young. That means he is the most high God. El El Young, the most high God. In Psalms chapter 7, we're there in 91. We just go back a little bit to chapter 7. And we're going to see stanza 17. Of course, even when we read in 91, it talked about the most high God. But in Psalms Chapter 7, stanza 17. I will thank the Lord because he is just. I will sing praises to the name of the Lord Most High. L. L. Young. He is God the Most High. There's no one ab above him. He is the Most High God. L. L. Young. And now we're going to learn some more names of God. Let's say. Jehovah Jireh. I know you've heard this, fake kids. God is Jehovah Jireh, meaning God is the Lord who provides. We saw earlier that Yahweh or Jehovah means Lord. So Jehovah Jireh means the Lord who provides for us. In the scriptures in Genesis chapter 22, It reads, we're going to read verse 14, Genesis 22 and 14. Abraham named the place Jehovah Jireh, or it might say in the New Living Translations, Yahweh, remember, Yahweh and Jehovah are interchangeable, which means the Lord will provide. So Jehovah Jireh, God is Jehovah Jireh. He is the Lord who provides for us, faith kids. Another name we're going to learn about God is that God is Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. God is the Lord who heals us. And we know God heals us from every sickness, every disease. He is our healer. In Exodus, right from Genesis, right over to the next chapter, even though there are some more scriptures of, of saying who God is, but we're just... For quickly purposes, I tried to keep them close together. Exodus 15, chapter 20, I mean, verse 26, chapter 15 and verse number 26, that Jehovah Rapha is God who heals us. Verse 26 reads, he said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, obeying his commandments and keeping all his decrees, then I will make you suffer any, I will not make you suffer any of the diseases I sent on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So God is Jehovah Rapha. And now fake kids, let's learn that God is Jehovah Shalom. He is the Lord of peace. In the midst of things and you don't understand, you can have peace because he has given us. He is our peace. He is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. In Judges chapter 6, let's go there real quickly. Judges chapter 6. My tablet is slow. 
Verse 24, fake kids. Chapter two, 6 and verse number 24. And Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it Yahweh or Jehovah Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. God is Jehovah Shalom. He is the Lord. He is our peace. And another name we, that God has given us for that he is, is that he is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. That means he was before and he will be after. He is the beginning and the end. He is always with us no matter what. The beginning, God is Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. In Revelations 1, chapter 8, that is the last book in the Old New Testament, last book of the Bible. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And the last one that I want to share with you on today is that God is Jehovah Gamola. Jehovah Gamola. I know you say, what? Jehovah Gamola. He is the Lord of recompense. He's God of our recompense, meaning he will pay, pay us back. In the scripture, it tells us he is not, he doesn't forget what we've done, that the labors of love that we've done and we're shown that he, the things that we've done, he, he does not forget us, what we've done for him. But he says he will repay us. And even faith kids, when there's things, when people might not do us right, we don't have to try to get revenge. We don't have to try to get people and pay them back because God is our God of recompense. He is Jehovah. Gamola, he is the Lord of our recompense. So thank kids. I hope today that you have learned some exciting things about the Lord, knowing the names of God. I will see you on next week. Bye-bye. back back with you this is tag time so if you're not from 6th to 12th grade we're not talking directly to you but hey if you're here and you can get something from god's word we welcome you to do that i'm pastor carol glad to have you here who are you i can't actually see you because right now you look kind of like a camera lens but since i can't see you just go ahead and type in the comment section let me know that you're here uh, now or if you're watching it later and we'd be glad to welcome you. God has always given us a word, a word that he wants to share with us. And again, while things are a little bit different, our life is, uh, is not the new normal, but we're in this stage where things are different while we're dealing with this stuff. And so we're going to have to do things differently to stay on top and to do what God has for us to do. So God has another message for us. I want you to listen. I want you to think. And then I want you to do what God has for you to do. We talked a little bit recently about encouragement and using our social media for encouragement. How did that go? Were you able to reach out to anyone? Were you able to help put some wind in their sails, help encourage them through some of the things that they might be dealing with at this time? Well, or has anybody been able to encourage you? Were you able to notice somebody speaking some words of encouragement to you and how that helped change your situation or your outlook? Tell me about that or tell me about it later when we're on our Zoom call this week. I'd love to see you there. We'll have our time for that later because I don't want to get distracted. All right. Today, what we're talking about is respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. I don't need you to tell me what it means to you, or I don't need you to tell me what it means to me. What I do need you to know is that respect is something that we're supposed to give as believers. Now, we have this time in our life, uh, and it comes back up at other times of our lives where uh, we feel like we should only respect certain people or we should only respect in a certain way, things like that. But I want to tell you, my friend, that as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a child of God, God wants you to respect other people. God wants you to respect him because he's the father creator. God wants you to respect your parents. We're supposed to honor and obey our parents. 
God also wants us to respect the authority that he's placed in our lives. God even wants us to not only respect authority or people that are older, or people that are over us. God wants us to respect each other. How can we have a friendship? How can we hang out? How can we have a good time if we don't have respect one for another? If I don't respect you and I'm constantly calling you out of your name and, you know, I'm just taking your stuff when I want your stuff and I'm disregarding the fact that you're even there or present sometimes, that's a lack of respect. Nobody wants to hang out with people that don't respect them. So God wants us to respect each other. And respect is actually more about you than it is the other person. We're going to look in a moment in the scripture and we're going to look at one particular place where respect is shown. But I want you to remember that respect is more about you than it is about the person that you're showing respect to. So yes, we're supposed to show respect to, again, the people that are over us. There are teachers, uh, law enforcement, just general adults in society. We owe them respect and honor. And, uh, you know, sometimes you might have heard uh, this this quote, or, or sometimes you may have said it, I've said it in my immaturity. I don't know if you've said it or thought it, uh, but sometimes we say that respect has to be earned. Respect is not given, it's earned. Well, that's not true. Because if you have to re- earn respect, what are you doing to earn respect? What have you done to cause someone to give you the respect you deserve? I don't believe that respect has to be earned. I believe that we are to respect each other because of who we are, not because of who they are. It's nice when people do things to earn your respect. It's nice when people are good enough or nice enough or whatever enough to be respected, but no one has to earn your respect. God wants you to respect them because of who he is and because of who you are, not because of who they are. So if we look at our our scripture text in 1 Samuel chapter 24, this is just one instance. There's a lot of instances in the Bible where you can see where respect is given. You can see where respect is also not given. But we're looking here at a time when it is, in 1 Samuel chapter 24. I want to read verses 8 through 10, but before we get there, I want to remind you or let you know if you don't know about this story. This story has to do with David, King David, and also King Saul. King Saul was the first king over the Jews, over the Israelites, over God's chosen people. And Saul had done some things and uh, Saul was going, was getting to the end of his time as king. And then God raised up David and said, okay, this is going to be the next king. But it didn't happen in a day. It wasn't an election where on Tuesday, uh, King Saul was king, but on Wednesday, it was going to take over. So just like now, we're going to uh, elect a president in November of this year. And uh, President Trump was the current president. He's still going to be president and through the first couple days of January. And then if there's a new president, he'll be sworn in or President Trump's second term will start in January. So even though um, God had chosen a new leader, there's some time that takes place before the new leader takes over. And what had happened in that time is that Saul began to resent David. He began to hate David. He began to want David dead so much that he attempted to kill him several times. And so when we pick up at this point in the story where we're looking at respect, we are going to look at David, show respect to Saul, even though Saul tried to kill David. You might say, man, you tried to kill me. All bets are off. I have no respect for you. I don't owe you anything. But we're about to see an extreme case where respect was still given because of authority and because of who David was, not necessarily because of who Saul displayed himself to be. So in 1 Samuel chapter 24, I want to look at verse number, starting verse number 8. It says, David arose. Okay, I didn't read that part either. So um, Saul was out, he was looking around, and David was in a cave and he was hiding. And Saul didn't know David was in the cave. Saul went in that cave and David had the opportunity to slay him. Kind of would have been, you know, legal, justifiable because Saul was trying to kill David. So if David killed Saul. That's what we would call self-defense. Thank God for self-defense. But David didn't use that opportunity for self-defense. Saul walked into the cave. He was unguarded. He was sleeping, as you might say. David had a chance to take him, but because of who David was, he didn't take him. And then Saul goes back out of the cave, none the wiser. 
didn't even know that David was there. So David rose afterward in verse eight, after Saul went in the cave and back out of the cave. David arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, my Lord, the king. And Saul looked behind him and David stooped his face to the earth. And he bowed down. David bowed to this guy that was trying to kill him, that he just had the opportunity to take his own life. But because Saul was king, and David had such a respect for God and for the authority that God had placed, had put in place being the king, he didn't take that opportunity. But he went and called Saul, and he bowed before him after he addressed him as a king. David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt. Why are you hearing that David's trying to hurt you? People are saying that I'm trying to hurt you, and I'm not. He said, Behold, this day thine eyes, your eyes, have seen how the Lord hath delivered you today into my hand in this cave. And some bade me, they begged me, they told me to kill you, but I spared you. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. David said, I am not going to kill this man because this man is the man that God decided to put in place as king. He said, I know you heard I'm trying to take you out. You may have heard I'm trying to kill you. I'm not. And now you can see I had an opportunity to take you and I didn't do it. And so he was trying to show Saul the respect that he had for the office and for who God was and for the fact that Saul was in that office. You may be in some difficult times in your life. You might deal with people who uh, show you that they don't deserve your respect. But again, the respect that we give to people is because of who we are, not because of who they are. Respect comes from, our respect for other people comes from our humility and it comes from our allowing God to be who he wants to be in us. We show respect for all those people who are around us, all the people that we come into contact with, because that's just how good God is, all right? You don't need somebody to show you how good they are before you respect them. If you have that mindset, that view, that is immature, and you should change it. I'm only telling you that because I love you, but I gotta go, all right? That's it, show people respect. If you didn't get it the first time, rewind it, look at the scripture, we'll talk on the Zoom, We'll talk sometime after that so you can respect. All right, Tag, that's all I have for you. You're it.